probably can't see him, but there's a little squirrel up there in that tree, and he's uh he's found some sort of nut that he's chewing on. And it sounds pretty hard. He's having a hard time getting through it. He's been working on it for a while. I can hear him all the way from inside the house. Hi. So how are you guys doing? Um, Uncle David DC's Adventures, and this is another vlog. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, friction fire and wood, and the kind of wood you might use, the kind of trees you might use for a friction fire. It's uh, been a few years since I've done one of these, actually. I would consider myself more of a modern survivalist and uh, kind of a prepper these days because I always make sure I'm prepared when I go into the woods opposed to relying on primitive skills. But for a long time when I was a younger man I spent lots and lots of my time practicing primitive skills and I was a little obsessed with it for a long time. And uh, building shelters, friction fires, and uh, processing water without containers and all that kind of stuff. I used to really be into that, but now that I've gotten a little older, I uh, enjoy the ease of having modern survival equipment on me. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the kinds of woods that are really good for making friction fire and how to find those, and not just particular trees, but the, the kind of grain that we're looking for. So let me bring the camera down close so you can see the wood itself. No need for me to be in the shot. And uh, we'll talk about this a little bit further. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to talk to you guys about wood as I process this thing down. Let's see what I got for a baton. Pretty weak. A uh, railing of some sort. Um, this piece of wood here is a piece of poplar. If you don't know what a poplar tree is, I recommend you go on on the internet and shine to look it up so you can recognize it when you're in the woods. He's a very valuable tree when it comes to fire making. Um, <laughs> now when you're talking about friction fire, the things that you mainly want to consider is uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of tree it is. What matters is what kind of attributes that tree in the wood in the grain has okay so there's lots of woods that you can use out in the woods for a friction fire and uh... and but there's certain things that you're looking for is here in maine it's kinda hard actually if you live like uh... If, if you live in a place where there's lots of cedar cedar is one of the best that you'll ever get for uh, friction fire because it's a little harder than poplar but it still doesn't have the sap. It's one of the biggest things that you gotta remember is uh, you're looking for a soft wood that has has a has a grain that's spread apart not really tight. You don't want the grain to be too tight like an oak or in maple because you're gonna need way too much heat and you're gonna need way too much friction to make the dust that you're gonna need for your fire. Okay, um, Poplar Poplar is a great choice because poplar is really soft grain and usually most of the soft grain woods like pines have a lot of sap in them and although the sap in pitch pine is very flammable when it comes to making friction fire you're usually gonna have to get your you're usually gonna have to get your friction fire you're gonna have to get your friction fire a lot warmer than you're probably gonna want um, to actually get the flame because that sap in there is gonna bring the temperature up with uh, with a light grained wood that doesn't um, have any sap in it you're probably only gonna have to get that that uh, that amber up to about 800 degrees and then it's gonna light it's gonna ignite and make your little red coal that you're looking for. If you're using a pine wood, I've used pine wood and I know you can start a friction fire with pine wood, but I think you're gonna have to get that friction fire up to about 10, up to a thousand to twelve hundred degrees in order to get that um, red amber and that's because of the sap. The sap has a much higher um, a much higher burning temp than just uh, some light um, grained wood would. 
So I'm going to break this up right here, if I can. This baton that I picked doesn't look like it's going to work very good. I always, I always have guys on the channel talking about how, why would you ever baton a piece of wood? I say, you should be carrying an axe. But, and I agree with them. I agree with them. Definitely I agree with them. But this is the one moment where I do baton. And most people are gonna. Because when you're making your hearth board, you're gonna have to baton the piece of wood you're working with. It's probably the only time that I, I you have to baton. All right, Every single time you're gonna have to baton. You can do this with an axe too, but... Uh, to get your board flat and exactly where you want it, you're probably going to have to baton with a knife. So there we go. Got a couple pieces. That's still a little thicker than I want, but we're going to carve it down anyway. So, now that we got that batoned up. Uh, like I was saying, one of the main things that you're looking for in the wood is that it's soft so we don't have cottonwood up here in Maine cottonwood is a nice soft wood in the south and that's a that's a wood that you can usually get a good friction fire going with if it's dry down in the south you guys will probably have poplars they have them uh, in the mountains of California they have them all over the place they don't grow in places where it's flat plains and they don't grow in the desert obviously so you're not gonna have them there Cedar, though, grows in a lot of places. Um, it grows here in Maine, but I can never seem to find any. And uh, cedar is a nice wood because the grain is soft, but it's not too soft, so your bow doesn't drill right through it. And uh, there's like almost no sticky sap in it, so it'll light up at about 800 degrees. But like I said, I can never find any cedar. So today what we have to work with here is this poplar which I think this is a silver poplar or a white poplar is what they call it, maybe yellow poplar I think it's a silver poplar though is what they call this tree and uh, this one piece of wood here this is, a, this is a piece of dried poplar that came from the survival property I brought it with me when I left last week because uh, I figured I'd want to do some carving I'm also going on a canoe trip with a bunch of people I'm taking them out and like I said I haven't I haven't actually practiced primitive fire making in about two years, and it's something you gotta practice if you want to stay up on, up on how to do it, you know, and get a good skill set and keep it. You're gonna have to practice. Um, so I know how to do this though, and I'm pretty good at making an amber. I have really weak lungs. If you, you guys can probably hear me gasping for breath in all these videos, and uh, I'm a, I'm an asthmatic. I have been my whole life, and blowing an amber into flame is nearly impossible so we're not going to do that today we are going to try to get an amber today but then on the camping trip this week I have a couple new methods for blowing it into flame that uh, a couple guys T Jack uh, his YouTube channel is great and he's uh, given me some advice on how to get a flame without really blowing into it and getting myself all out of breath I also am going to bring a fan to do some fanning methods and uh, we'll see all that on the trip but I just wanted to make sure that I had a piece of wood that is going to work for a friction fire and I want to make sure that I have the technique down so when I take these people out on the canoe trip this week and try to show them this skill that I want to make sure that I can accomplish it you know so we're going to test it out today and that's kind of what this vlog is about just testing this wood out so I'm going to break a piece off of this. This is what we're going to use right here. This we're going to save. This is what I'm going to save because we're going to do this again in the woods on the canoe trip when I have uh, the students out there with me. So let's get set up on a better shot so I can carve this thing up.
Yeah, those two pieces. Those will be the pieces right there. Alright, so we're going to start with the drill piece. See, a lot of guys, I don't know, they have different opinions on if you should use a harder piece of wood for the drill. Uh, I think you should just use the same piece of wood. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of wood you're using. But with nice soft stuff, you're going to get dust from both ends building up. And what you really need, what you're looking for the most, is build a nice pile of dust in your, uh, in your notch. But we'll get to that in a second here. Because we're going to get this carved down. how long you like your drill and everything, it's kind of uh, up to you. Kind of depends on how good you are at using it. Some guys use really short ones. I like it kind of in between short and long. Um, and how fat and wide is going to kind of depend on what kind of wood and how wet it is. Because when it's really wet, you're going to probably want something that's a little fatter for your drill bit. That way you can have more uh, surface area for friction and for heat generation. But it's also going to make it a little harder to drill when you're dealing with that. Try to keep it straight, which it's not coming out too straight yet. Starting to straighten up for us. Hmm. We got a crack in the wood here, but uh, we'll see. It's not very deep, so I might just cut that off. As when I'm rounding it off, I should be able to get rid of that. Obviously, I'm not going to need this whole thing either, so uh, I'll probably take the backhoe Laplander out and cut this thing down to about this this long. And I might just get rid of that crack. I'll probably cut on both ends just so you don't have the crack, because obviously a crack, a crack like that is going to catch in the divot when you're spinning, when you're spinning it. There we go, uh, and we'll carve this down. And once we're right, so apparently the camera got it was in the direct sunlight and it got too hot and shut down on me there. Um, never had that happen before, but I guess uh, August sun, you know, August summer sun, that'll do it. So I'm gonna just keep on carving this drill up until I get it really straight. I mean, you want it to be straight and. Uh, I want it to be a lot shorter than this, so we're on our way to carving her down. <clears throat> and this is gonna take forever if I do it on camera, so I'm gonna come back when I'm done with this, and then we'll start on the hearth board. All right, so here we are. This is our hearth. As you can see, uh, it's pretty flat now. Squared it up. This is actually a little thicker than I would usually go. But uh, this poplar is really, really soft, and I just don't want it to drill right through. So uh, having it a little thicker can be a pain for gathering dust, but we'll just make our notch a little bit bigger than we usually would. So let's get down on the ground and make a notch in this. So we're going we're gonna to start here by making a divot. This is the uh, Blackbird SK-5, and this is the one that I was sent. Well, I was sent the Blackbird uh, Noir as my replacement for my broken one and I didn't like it so I sold it to my buddy uh, 
it was nice having that tactical powder coating on it, but the 90 degree was just not sharp enough on that other knife. So all this knife hasn't been sharpened. This is factory edge that I've been working with. It definitely could use a run over with a strop. But one of the things that's really great about the SK5 is that the uh, the point is centered on the knife, and that's so you can do this. You know, we're gonna get a good bowl cut out here. That's a little too close to the edge there. Mm. Yeah, I think that's going to be good enough to start her. See how dusty that gets? That's why Poplar works so great. Um, now let's pull the saw out here. and There's our little divot, and we're going to make a notch right here, which actually... I see most guys, most guys will work, will work this in a little bit first before they make their notch and that's because with the notch in there it kind of catches sometimes but I'm not that worried about it. If you make your notch so it just barely touches the bowl you won't have that problem. But uh, let's, let's carve this no notch in here. That should be more than perfect. So now let me go find a bow and we're gonna see if this works out and give it a test run. Alright, um, I'm at my great grandfather's old house. Uh, he passed away in 2004 and my grandmother passed away last year. But uh, this is a branch from a peach tree that he had in his garden and he uh, he used to sit under that tree a lot growing up. I remember that was one of the spots in the garden he sat at a lot. So, uh, kind of cool. He used a branch from that tree. Uh, most of that tree's dead now. There's only one little branch coming off that has peaches on it this year. So, here we are. I mean, you pretty much... What I like to do is just do this one of these numbers. And then you're not tying all kinds of knots and everything. Come down, come all the way down to this other end, and just kind of find a place, make sure it's loose enough that you can get a spin on your spindle, and I'm just going to wrap it around again. And actually, I like to wrap it around enough that there's like a handle. So it has some sort of a handle. But let's go get set up in a place where it's not so hot and sunny. We're going to go do this in the shade because it's probably going to take a little bit of effort to get this smoke going. Alright, here we go. We got everything laid out. Um, hearthboard, some leaves to catch the ash. I drill a bit. And this, I guess, is going to be my handhold. But this is still just a piece of poplar and you usually want a piece of hardwood for your handhold, but there's no hardwood where I'm at right now. It's a visiting family today, so I, uh, I'll be back out in the woods in a couple days here. But uh, I got this rock, it has a little divot here. We can use that if it's burning through this handhold. So let's see if I can get set up here in a way where my knees aren't killing me.
All right, let's get going, huh? Yeah, I don't think this cord is tight enough on here. And start out slow, breathing nicely. <clears throat> nope, I gotta retie this. Try number two, huh? Come on, you little bastard. <clears throat> like I said, you gotta practice after two years. This isn't as easy as it used to be. We're gonna sharpen this up though. So I'll be right back. Alright, try number three. It's burning right through the handhold, so we're gonna have to get something harder. Alright, here we go. I got a piece of that peach tree. Nice little divot in there. That should work a lot better. Yeah, that should work a lot better. My hand was getting hot before, which uh, not good. Try number five here. See how it goes. I uh, fix the board up and fix this up a little. All right, there you go. So that's how you make a bow drill set. We're gonna have to finish this project when we get out to the property or out to the woods because the squeaking is too loud and is apparently 
bothering the elderly neighbors. So, that's why I hate the city. I can't wait to get back out into the woods. Every time I come visit family, I'm just miserable because there's nothing else. There's nothing for me to do here in the city, ever. Nothing. Nothing that I'm interested in. Well, that's basically how it goes here in the city. That's why it just drives me crazy being down here. I can't wait to get back up to the survival property. Basically, there's nothing for me in the city. When I come down here to visit my mother and visit my sisters and uh, visit my nieces and nephews, there's nothing for me to do here. I mean, uh, I do get to use the opportunity to use the editing on, uh, on, on the computer to make my videos a little bit better. But other than that, I'm really just sick of being out here. But uh, like I said, in a couple days here, we're going to go out on a canoe trip and we'll finish this bow drill project up out there. And once we get out to the survival property, we'll be out there for a while. We're going to start building some stuff, maybe uh, building a cabin. We're at least going to start taking down some trees, some pine trees for the cabin. And uh, yeah, the vlog should get a lot more interesting and a little bit more entertaining once I get out to the property. And uh, <laughs> we'll just see how it goes, you know? Nobody complains about anything out there. Every time I'm in the city, someone's complaining about something I'm doing. I hear lawnmowers going in the background, children screaming. It'll just be a real relief to get back out to the survival property because the city really has nothing for me. So as always, thank you for joining me and I will see you guys all on the next video.